Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Extinct Breaks Originals! It's Cap Cretaceous Week still! And for this very special episode, we will be featuring the LEGO compatible custom Jurassic World Cap Cretaceous Season 3's Corbius Rex. But before we head on with this video, I'd like to say thanks to YouTube.com Audio Library for this awesome background music. And before we head in further, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And to be able to support my channel, please do not skip on all the ads on all my videos. You may also like to follow me on all my social media platforms. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Leica. There I'll be posting some of my exclusive photos and video clips as well. So I'll see you there, everyone! This is also a collaboration video between me, Let's Get Groovy, and Zane Adventures. The guest's PC contest winners will be announced later, but now, let's move on with the making of the Scorpius Rex. So here is how I kit bash the figure initially. So we have here the Baryonyx head, and also the um, legs and the arms of the Indoraptor, and then the body of the King Ghidorah as well as the tail. So aside from that, I actually added several more articulation to this including this to the body. So I also lengthened the... Um, the legs as well so when I was actually watching the video of the Scorpius Rex it was really long and it's almost kangaroo like the arms I think will also be needing several more you know articulations as it actually somehow or, or some places in the videos where it is actually crawling and also climbing up trees the entire head of this creature will be out from scratch and so I added this teeth on it and so it's going to be really scary guys so I'm hoping that you would be sticking out to the end of the making of the video. And so aside from those changes, I also added here articulation in the tails because I think it would be really nice if we have you know um, the spikes or the quills um, directed on that particular area of the tail only and then we have here of course added several more quills so we have here quills on the tail quills on the head and also quills on the arms of the in the raptor and i think it's really looking good so far even from this stage you can see here the teeth they're all crooked and I think it's going to be really scary when it comes to, you know, adding in the clay to this uh, particular kit bash portion of the E750. Okay, so some of you may think it's a little bit too much for one figure, but I was really hyped and excited, and this is what happens actually when I'm excited. <laughs> So the, um, I'm also done with the uh, sculpting portion here and it's now time for us to primer the entire figure. So I've also, you know, um, prepped this up with uh, several um, wet sanding portions and so we're ready to spray paint on this figure already. So yeah! Just a few tips maybe guys that when you are actually doing this, do it from outside or if you are well ventilated then you can actually do it indoors. Uh, but still, when you're doing outside, please wear your mask so that you won't inhale all the fumes. And here is E750 and several action poses after it has been, you know, um, primered already. So that's those are just test shots that I actually did and I had really good fun with it. And here is the E750 up close uh, after it has been primered and already dried and we're ready to paint. But before we do that, here are the materials. So we'll have, of course, paint brushes. We'll have several um, paint, uh, of course, acrylic paint to it. We have here Liquitex on black, um, yellows also from Mary's. We have Reeves for white. We also have Mary's for red, of course, for the eyes. And then we will have probably add several, you know, brown tones to it as well as uh, green and maybe some blue because I think the E750 will have some purplish tones to it as well. And aside from the paint, we also have some water here on my uh, Universal Studios um, Jurassic Park uh, mug. And of course, we wouldn't be doing the painting without examining or looking at several references here. So we have here... Uh, screenshots or photo stills from the season 3 of Cap Cretaceous and I think they're really wild 
But I also added here several, you know, um, screenshots from the gaming viewer here. <laughs> it looks really sleepy, but yeah. I think his uh, photo of the E750 is really crisp and so we're also using that as our reference as well. Okay, so we're putting that away and uh, we're starting on with the plane. And E750 actually has this yellowish tan color um, underbelly to it. So uh, mix some yellow ochre here with a little bit of black and a little bit of green. And then uh, lighten it up a bit with some white. And this will be applied on all over the um, underbelly of the uh, E750 as well as uh, upper lip portions of it. The next basic color would be this mixture of black, um, blue, a little bit of red, and some white uh, on, on, on the plate that I have here. And then we're applying it on all the surfaces here above. So it won't be really black because um, I think the E750, although it is described to be a charcoal block, uh, in the um, actual photos or actual movie itself or um, season for Netflix, it's actually not very black at all. It's only really black when it's nighttime or it's raining, things like that. I do plan to make it, you know, um, a little bit more scarier with several tones of or uh, undertones of darker colors than this one. So again, this will be applied on the entire back, the upper uh, portion of the head, the arms, the legs, as well as the tail. Okay, so since my E750 will have several you know, additional um, articulation to it, so the joint areas would be somehow problematic. So what I will be doing is I'll be painting them on and then afterwards I'll be spraying them out with clear varnish so that it is somehow protected from you know scratching and um, the um, scraping off of the paint won't be that problematic uh, uh, somehow. But you know there will be some um, uh, breakage on the paint but that's actually okay uh, at least there wouldn't be so much So after we're done with this particular color, I have to rest down a bit because we need to uh, at least have this dried first and then go on with the second um, second coat for this one because I want it to be really, you know, uniform all throughout the entire figure before we even go on with the details. So I won't be showing you in the video that I, I did a second coat for this particular color but at least you know now that we have to do some you know uh, going back to the paint so that it actually looks really good. So after this has been dried, we went on with the details. So among the detail uh, portions that I will be doing would be this mixture of the same color yellow that I actually used below and then mixing it up with the same colors that I have on the above portion or, or the top portion of the uh, E750. This way we will have a certain transition color from the yellow towards the um, color that is darker uh, purple here or ash gray purple if you want to say it as I really don't know what color it is well anyway so um, this is looking like poop color to me <laughs> well anyways it looks good anyways on the E750 so this will actually go on the upper lip of the E750 as well as several portions of the lower jaw as well so here you go if you can see, I've also mixed a little bit of, you know, darker colors of uh, um, the same purplish color on the uh, quills of the E750. So I've colored them up away, but we will be going through that again later on because, you know, um, we might want to do several more details to that as well. So uh, a darker uh, color of uh, purple is actually... Um, included here as well so that it will have that shadowy portion on the under eyes of the E750 as well as the nose bridge or the face bridge I don't know what it's called but yeah it is that indention between the eyes and the nose 
this same purple color will be you know added as several more uh scaling details on the back of the indoor uh in the raptor of the e750 uh so that it will somehow um highlight the plates on the back similar very similar to that of the ankylosaurus so in the video you can see here that the changes are very um you know shallow or it's not very apparent but when this actually dries up it will uh highlight the top portion of the plates and create deeper shadows on the uh, uh, details on the sculpting as well. This same shade of purple is actually added on the sides of the E750 here uh, and also the uh, thighs as well as the arms of the E750. Several more details such as this uh, type of scaling is also added on the tail portion as well. This darker purplish color is also uh, the same color that I used in the spikes there on the ankle of the E750. For the nails of the E750 or the claws, it will be a different color, probably uh, deep black maybe would be uh, very good for this uh, E750. You'll see it on the edge uh, or on the end of the um, video on the making of the E750. So here we're just added uh, several more details on the coloration we have here, colored insides of the mouth, the eyes, the teeth, and then later on the nails of the E750. I know a lot of you guys are liking the E750 design, especially the head. It has this um, very apparent overbite to it and a disarray of different sizes of teeth, especially on the upper portions of the head. Well, I think it's a really good design and I really like the E750. Well, that's it for our the making of the video on the E750. We will now be proceeding with the announcement of the Gatsby's PC Contest winners and we'll start with the lucky picks. Sean Rosamond Dapp, Samuel David, Nicholas, Victor Gabriel, Joey Hara, Dynamosaurus, Jacob, Ashton, CG, and the Indoraptor. And congratulations everyone! Now for our top 10 winners, we have Dynamation, Presidio, Z Big Neil, Jack Torch, Miguel Philip Eisen, Shala Johansi, Marcel Biddick, Tyrannosaurus Animation Studios Mechanic Tiger Maximum Power And Mandy Omar Congratulations everyone And I'll see you on the next Guesses PC Contest For those of you who'd like to join Here's how Just click on the extinct bricks icon And then click on the community link And it will lead you to all my posts Gosh, my heart's still pounding. Well, let's move on to the assemblies of the Scorpius Rex. So, let's count up the number of figures. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that makes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, we have 16 parts to it. Of course, let's start by building up the arm first. So, we have the first connection that connects the arm to the uh, shoulders. And then, of course, the forearm here and then of course the hands oops and there you have it let's just position it so that it's easily connected to the entire body let's now pick up the head portion and then connect the lower jaw there you have it now let's connect this to the first half of the body it's time for us to connect the arms Let's position it again so that it looks, you know, um, on a neutral pose while it's being uh, assembled. There you have it. And then the right one. 
Now let's connect the second part of the body here. Now let's connect the legs. Let's start with the right one and then the left. Now the tail is a two part one so let's connect the base part and then the tip part of the tail. And there you have it. The 750 or Scorpius Rex. And now it's time for us to have the closer look on the E750 or the Scorpius Rex here. So you can see here that the Scorpius Rex actually did a little kill hill and it seems that the Parasaurolophus is dead. <laughs> so our custom E750 or Scorpius Rex here is actually based off from the Season 3 Camp Cretaceous E750 Scorpius Rex. And of course, EB, Moira, and Usher here is really glad but scared at the same time. Even I would be scared with my own creation here, you know, I think uh, we really did a good job at, you know, depicting what the E750 looks like. Well, our trio here will be coming back later for some size comparisons, but for now, let us move on with the closer look on the E750. And we have here, of course, several, you know, spikes or quills to it, which is actually detaches and um, uh, launches onto the prey here. Oops and actually kills it slowly while it's being you know sedated or it's being sickly uh then the e750 will devour it like so in an instant it's gone <laughs> well let's move on with a closer look you see here the head is really deformed and um, we have here uh the eyes set up very high on the top of the head and uh with camera focused here, you can see some details on the sculpting uh, that is very frog-like in my opinion. And you have here also a uh, defined overbite as well. I made a deep jagged and with different sizes and shapes so that it is very similar to that of the E750 in the series. It has this short neck and uh, of course spikes or quills on the top of its head. It also has this... Um, uh, sculpted armor on the back of its um, body as well as the tail and with several spikes and also quills on the arms as well as that of the legs. You see here also that the legs are um, extended and long with um, single claws on uh, the third toe of its um, feet. The tail will also have uh, spikes and quills as well. The thorax or the thoracic cage of the E750 is uh, definitely larger than that of the um, stomach so it looks like it's um, a little bit thin and will have that um, hunched up look to it. And as per articulation, it can actually open and close its mouth. It can um, move its neck like so up and down and it can also be twisted like so on a 360 basis so i'm just being careful not to scratch out the paint here guys <laughs> so the arms here will have several articulations so we have here articulation on the shoulder part articulation on the elbow part and articulation on the wrist part so i didn't change the hands here because i wanted to have grab on something probably a person or a small dinosaur that you can actually eat now the legs also can be uh, moved like so and then the tail are in two parts and you can move it freely as well. Now one unique feature of this uh, E750 is that it can actually uh, move its head, uh, its body like so uh, from the thorax, separating the thorax and that of the abdominal area. So it can actually uh, stand up like uh, very much similar to that of the human being and how it actually first appeared with the children or with Darius and friends on uh, on the season itself on season 3 wherein it actually stands up like so and then there thunder uh, and also um, lightning going towards its background so that's really scary for me so this one is able to do that as well and it can also hunch down and uh, uh, for you to be able to you know uh, position it walking in all fours so earlier in the making of the video, you see that I have actually positioned in, in several, um, you know, action poses. You can actually do those. It can uh, jump up. It can also run and, uh, you know, uh, do several action poses as well because it can actually be twisted 
on the midsection of the body. So sometimes it looks like a person or an alien even standing up in an upright position like so. And that's it for our um, closer look on the E750. I hope you guys like it. Some of you may comment on the purple color but I think it really works for this one and probably the inspiration for the E750 is Barney. So purple and yellow, get it? <laughs> Well, let's move on with the size comparisons of the E750 or Scorpius Rex. Now, we're bringing back here EB, of course, the leader of the pack, and to be, you know, uh, compared with the E750. And based off from the uh, actual scene from the movie, I think the size of the E750 here is just about the right proportion and the right size as well. I consider the size very well because in some of the news before the actual season uh, began, it's actually based off from an intermediate size of the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor. So I made this a little bit, you know, smaller than that of the Indominus Rex and also uh, bigger than that of the Indoraptor. Kibi and friends will be back for the species roll call, but now let's compare it with some of the extinct bricks creatures that we have here. So. First up, we have Extinct Breaks Blue here, and Blue really played an important part in the series, but uh, for those of you who haven't uh, gone through the or haven't watched the series yet, so I won't be making any more spoiler for you guys, so if you haven't watched it, please watch it because it's so awesome, You can't even, I can't even um, describe it. Well, anyways, uh, this is blue. It's a repaint of my mini raptors here and uh, along with the um, raptor squad, I also did a repaint of those. So if you haven't watched that yet, please watch it, guys. I think you're going to enjoy it as well. Alright, so let's move on to the next comparison here. We have the Extinct Rex Monolophosaurus. Also, the Monolophosaurus uh, is part of the um, e Season 3 of uh, Camp Cretaceous and uh, they actually appeared when they went to the penthouse where Kenja lived, so, but other than that, no more spoilers, guys. Okay, so the Manolophosaurus is also available in video, so I'm just putting on the link here, and then uh, please do watch it as well. Okay, so another uh, comparison is the Extinct Break Ceratosaurus, and in that same series, the Ceratosaurus actually plays an important part of... Uh, when and how the E750 actually went on rampage on the island. So watch it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so the Ceratosaurus here is a little bit smaller than that of the E750 because although it's uh, a medium-sized uh, theropod, I think the E750 will, uh, will be, uh, you know, it's a little bit more uh, larger than that of the Ceratosaurus. And uh, I'm just, you know, recreating a scene there, but uh, you guys had better watch it. Ah, poor Ceratosaurus. Well, next on the list would be the Sinoceratops. And I think you're seeing a trend here that all of the creatures that you have here that I'm showing in comparison is actually appearing on the Season 3 of Camp Cretaceous. So the uh, Sinoceratops will be, you know, in contact with Darius there and you'll probably know that it will have some sort of, you know, um, connection to the E750. But as I said, watch the series guys, watch it. So in terms of size, the uh, Sinoceratops here is a little bit shorter than that of the uh, E750 and also, um, you know, in terms of length, it's also shorter as well. So here is the Extinct Briggs Parasaurolophus, uh, which you met earlier, lying down, dead. <laughs> but uh, he or she did its role and I think she's already okay now. Now, <laughs> I spoke too soon. So you can see here that the quills are still attached to the Parasaurolophus and probably the E750 is still pursuing it until it's dead. <laughs> there, the clothes are actually attached on the uh, Parasaurolophus. So uh, that's quite an idea that I actually got that I can actually, you know, um, have quills uh, flying out of the E750, but that will just leave so many holes on the figure itself. So I, I just, you know, created several um, 
ways on how to detect this particular ability of the E750. But among the rest of the uh, comparisons would of course be the two hybrids that is actually intermediate of. This is the Extinct Bricks Indoraptor. Now we know that the Indoraptor that LEGO made was a little bit big so I recreated this Indoraptor instead to have a normal size for comparison. And you can see here that definitely this Indoraptor, although it's walking on all fours, is smaller than that of the um, E750 or Scorpius Rex. And even if it's uh, standing uh, on all two uh, legs, uh, it still is uh, smaller than that of the E750. So among the differences would be of course the head shape and then it has this stripe on the sides and uh, the Indoraptor doesn't have that yellowish you know underbelly to it. But nonetheless they are both darkly colored uh, creatures unlike the Indominus Rex. So thank you Mr. Indoraptor, well, let's now go on with the Extinct Rex Indominus Rex. So this Indominus Rex is actually based off from the Indominus Rex from Camp Cretaceous that I did a few months back. So if you haven't watched that uh, particular um, uh, video of mine, please go ahead and watch it. I'll be putting on the links on the above portion so that you'll be able to directly access them up. So you can see here in comparison, the uh, E750 here is uh, smaller than that of the Indominus Rex. Both of which will have several quills on the back. Uh, except that the um, Indominus or the E750 will have quills also on the sections of the tail, unlike that of the Indominus Rex. Of course, the shape of the head of the Indominus Rex would be very different with that of the E750 because, as we all know, E750 will have that frog like, weird looking, grotesque um, head to it. Well, Anyways, that's it for our size comparisons. We can now proceed with the Extinct Rigs PC Roll Call. But before we do that, of course, I'd like to remind everyone that you may already comment down below which other Camp Cretaceous creatures you'd like to see next on um, Extinct Rigs. You can even um, suggest several more um, species which may be appearing on uh, Camp Cretaceous Season 4 already. And Evie and friends are back here for you uh, guys to be reminded that all of these creatures that you see here is actually available as videos here in my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched them, please watch them up and uh, seek them in the Extinct Bricks playlist. I'll be putting up some links also so that you can access them as well. Let's start with the roll call. That is Extinct Bricks Blue. This is the Extinct Bricks Monolophosaurus. This is the Extinct Rigs Indoraptor. This is the Extinct Rigs Sinoceratops. This is the Extinct Rigs Parasaurolophus. Extinct Rigs Ceratosaurus. And last but not least, the Extinct Rigs Indominus Rex. And of course, the star of the show here, the Scorpius Rex or E750. <laughs> <laughs> Bad sounds, I know guys. Well, let's move on with the last portions of this video. This is the last looks on the E750. Now, E750 or Scorpius Rex actually came from the two Latin words, Scorpius meaning scorpion and Rex meaning king. Thus, it is also known as the Scorpion King. The Scorpion King or the E750 is actually a hybrid of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Velociraptor, a Carnotaurus, a Frog, and a Scorpion Fish. It can grow up to a height of 9.8 feet, a length of 21 feet, and the weight is actually unknown. What happened here? It's a Parasaurolophus and it has quills on it. Oh my god! It's a Scorpius Rex or the E750! Ah! And that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Also, please don't forget to support our other channels, EB Toy Universe and the Adventures of Moira and Asher. Watch their videos and subscribe to their channel. And as we always would say, let your inner dino break. <laughs>